Hey guys, right here, welcome to the channel. I like to explore power options when the power goes out. So today we are going to be looking at a variety of different charge controllers from super cheap to super expensive. We're gonna look at the features that they have, why you might wanna buy one over the other. Plus we're going to do a full day comparison test in clouding conditions and sunning conditions and see which one produces the most power. So if you wanna have some fun, come along. Okay. Okay, so the main thing you're gonna to wanna to look at when buying a solar charge controller is which scenario you're going to be using it. So if you wanna use something just to keep your RV topped off with a small 100 watt solar panel, a cheap PWM would be good for you. I used this, I used one similar to this in my RV for three years, and to be honest, I loved it. This is what got me into solar. Now PWM charge controllers typically accept smaller voltages, you can't connect solar panels in series, and you're restricted to the smaller solar panels. You, can, you can't connect a large solar panel to this. But, uh, but on the plus side, these are super cheap, really easy to get into solar, and they're gonna produce more power than a typical plug-in three amp battery charger maintainer you would use if you had a 100 watt solar panel. Now typically the MPPT solar charge controllers allow for higher voltages, except this one only allows for 30 volts open circuit, I think it is. This is the 20 amp model, but you can get a 10 amp charging model for $40. This one's really small. This one might be good if you have a tight space, but you still want good MPPT tracking. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how this one compares to the other MPPTs in sunny and clouding conditions. Okay, but if you wanna to connect to a large solar panel, multiple solar panels in series, or a large RV power system, you wanna use one of these MPPT charge controllers. These would also be good if you're building a little DIY power station. This one can run a couple fridges and it can run my gas furnace when the power goes out. So each of these models we're gonna be testing here can accept 100 volts open circuit and can charge the battery with 30 amps. So it looks like this Power Queen charge controller was provided by Shenzhen Time Technology. And there's a Rich Solar and Renogy also have a charge controller really similar to this one. I don't know if they're made by the same company, they might be. So at this price, I put this little circle because this, this one includes a Bluetooth connection so it can use my phone to monitor. This is my preferred way to monitor how much power is coming in during the sun. And you can check the voltage on your battery these EP Ever solar charge controllers are pretty popular, so I decided to include it in the test. This one does not come with a Bluetooth monitor, so if you don't want Bluetooth, this one could save you some money. You can add a Bluetooth monitor to this one, but then you're going to be up near the $130 mark. So in that scenario, you might as well just get a Victron. Okay, the Victron is the most expensive one, and that is for a reason, because it is very good. It'll be interesting to see how this one compares with the other MPPT. One of the main things you're paying for with this is the Bluetooth app, is the phone app. It has a really good application. If you want to nerd out on the numbers of how much solar you're collecting throughout the day, or if you want to build a custom battery, and if you want to have custom charge settings, you can do anything you want with the app. This is my favorite here. It's actually not that much more expensive than these other ones, and you're getting a lot more. We'll see how it compares to these guys. Also to note is that if you're using lead acid batteries, these come with temperature compensation ports. You can hook a sensor in there and it'll compensate for cold conditions or hot conditions so you're not damaging your, your sealed lead acid batteries. These cheaper ones don't have a temperature compensation port, but I think you could also make the argument is that if you're only charging with a 100 watt solar panel, you may not be damaging your sealed lead acid batteries anyways. But that's something to be aware of. Okay, let's go ahead and do some testing. I'll show you the equipment that we have here. So I've got this meter that's connected to each solar charge controller to show how much power is going into the battery throughout the day. And then each charge controller also has this five foot wire that's gonna connect to a solar panel. Each charge controller is going to have its own solar panel connected. Okay, so I've got a bunch of different batteries. I could connect each battery to its own solar charge controller, but the individual batteries might have different charging algorithms. To be most fair, I'm gonna connect all of these to the same battery. 
So there shouldn't be any conflicts as long as the battery isn't overcharged. Uh, this battery can accept 100 amps of charge. So I'm definitely gonna be under the 100 amps of charging even on a sunny day. <clears throat> so it is gonna get a little bit messy because everything's gonna connect to these two terminals. It's gonna be the fairest way I can think of to test this. So one of the problems I am going to have is I don't want this battery to be overcharged. So I'm gonna connect an inverter to this. I've got this 1200 watt inverter. This one's pretty cheap. So this inverter comes with these charging cables, which is nice. So I'm gonna connect the positive to the positive and the negative to the negative. And then I can turn it on and then I'll have these 120 volt plugs where I can plug my hair dryer into this to make sure this battery doesn't overcharge. This one comes with a nice screen so I can see how much power is coming from the inverter. So this is a nice portable power station. This can run my furnace and my fridges in, in case the power goes out. Okay, so here's the test we're gonna run. We're gonna first run some tests in sending conditions with a 100 watt solar panel. We're gonna quickly connect the 100 watt solar panel to each charge controller when the sun's out and see how much power is being put into the battery. Then we're going to do the full day test in the sun. We're gonna use our 240 watt solar panels we're gonna have it set all day in the sun, see how much power it collects. And then on the clouding condition, we're gonna do the same test, full day, as long as the clouds are out. So I'll show you that, and we're gonna run the cloudy test after that. Okay, here's our setup. It is a wiry mess right here. But anyways, here are the charge controllers. Each one has this meter attached. So I didn't get the EP ever in time for this sunny test, so it's only gonna be part of the cloudy test. Beautiful sunny day today. We'll keep this at that angle. Got, got a lot of snow yesterday. Okay, I'm gonna do this really fast because the sun's tracking across the sky and I wanna keep it as fair as I can. So we're gonna start with the cheapest one first. This is the PWM. Each one of these charge controllers is adjusted for a lithium iron phosphate battery. These ones don't have a specific lithium iron phosphate battery setting, but they do have battery three setting, which charges at 14.7 volts. And that's roughly the same voltage that these will be charging at in, in the, with the LFP setting. LFP batteries will charge at like 14, I think it's 14.4 to 14.6. So these will be able to charge about that same rate. So let's see what we got for the cheapest charge controller. 62 watts. Time to change it up. This is a MPPT, supposedly, in quotes. I kind of don't think it is a true MPPT. 62 watts as well. Okay, here's the batteria. This one is 79 watts. There's the Power Queen, generic. 78, now it's 79. Okay, let's try the Victron. 80, 81 watts. So here are the results of the 100 watt test. These are all pretty close. These two, I thought they would do better with the 100 watt solar panel, but there is clearly some inefficiencies there. Now this is still producing five amps, so it's plenty to keep your battery topped off if you wanna go with the, one of the cheap options. Okay, uh, let's try the all day test. It's sunny, we're good. So these cheaper charge controllers may not work with this test in the sun, but I'm gonna plug it in, they might fry. Let's try it out and see what happens. If they start working, good, they'll be part of the test. If they don't, I'll just keep going with the test. Earlier I tested the, the open circuit voltage of these and the short circuit current, and they're all behaving very close. So it should be a fair test. We'll plug the cheap one in first, and we'll probably have these out here all day. What is it, December 4th, I think, today? And it's super sunny, it's 40 degrees out here, really nice weather. So let's try it. Hopefully these will work. Hopefully it doesn't fry my charge controller here. This is the cheap charge controller. Nice, it's actually working. That's good. Okay. 
the cheap MPPT. Hopefully it doesn't fry itself. I'm getting some watts coming through, so that's good. Good, I was worried about that. Okay, here's the battery. -a. This is a real MPPT. Nice, that one's working as well. This will be a good test. Power clean. Good. So it looks like they're all working. So I'm gonna get out of, I'm gonna stop shading these solar panels. It, those meters are gonna collect how many amp hours throughout the day. And oh, let's see how much amps we're charging with right now. It's charging at 30 amps and it's at 30%. So I need to get my hair dryer plugged in here so it won't charge this battery too fast. Okay, that looks good. I'm just gonna let this sit. It's, I think it's 10.30 right now, so we let this sit all day. Okay, I just brought up the app for the battery. Looks like it's charging with 10 amps with the hairdryer running. So we'll watch it and make sure it doesn't get too high, but I think that'll run smooth throughout, throughout the day. So here's the Victron charge controller. I can see I'm getting 143 watts out of my 240 watt solar panels. Because it's December, my sun is going to be really low on the horizon here in Utah. So the panels could be tilted more to collect more sun, but this will just be part of the test. We're all at the same angle, pretty close, as close as I can get. I'm just gonna take a quick peek at how things are doing going. 76 watts, 78 watts, these ones are definitely not doing very good. Let's see how this other cheap one is doing. Well, this one's not super cheap, but 45 watts, 46, 44, 45, Victron, 48, 49. Does not look like this is an MPPT charge controller. Although this one is. 3.30, it's been about five hours. I'm just gonna turn it off. I'm gonna check this before the sun goes down behind those trees. All right, let's go ahead and look at the results. The Victron is in first place. I'll get a darker marker and write it in there. Yeah, I can't find my marker. Let's look at the results. All right, here we go. Let's look at the cheapest one. The PWM total watt hours is 27 amp hours, 364 watt hours. 364 watt hours. All right, let's look at this other dirt cheap one. 359 watt hours. Okay, battery. -a. Here's the battery -a MPPT. 652 watt hours. Power Queen. Let's see if the Power Queen can outperform. Six hundred and fifty three. Six hundred and fifty three point nine watt hours. Pretty much exactly the same. All right, Victron. Six hundred and seventy seven. Winner here. So that's pretty dang close. Okay, here's our cloudy conditions. Hopefully these clouds can stay around for a while. Not super cloudy, but what we got to work with. Okay, for the cloudy test, we'll put the Victron to this solar panel, Power Queen, EP Ever, Batteria, MPPT, and then we'll use the last one for the PWM. We still have partial sun because of those clouds. I'll plug these in first. Batteria. EP ever. Power Queen. Victron. Okay. 20 amps coming in right now to the battery.
Okay, let's look at the results. The clouds are starting to leave, so I didn't want to mix this test up with pure sun conditions. So this is just two hours of straight clouds. So let's look at what we got. Here's the PWM, 112 watt hours. Okay, here's the battery. 207 watt hours. Okay, let's go to the EP Ever. 212 watt hours. Okay, pretty close. Let's look at the Power Queen. 214 watt hours. Okay, Victron, let's see how it did. 's see if it's worth the money. <laughs> Whoa, 211 watt hours. Let me double check that. 211 watt hours. So with this test, the Power Queen is the winner, but they're pretty darn close. So I know that wasn't like the perfect cloudy condition test. There's still quite a bit of sun coming through there. So I'm gonna do another test when we have full cloud cover. In Utah here, there's often an inversion that totally covers the sky. You can't see the sun, but I'll put those results in the description of this video so you can still see how they compare. But it looks like the MPPTs, Victron does a little bit better in sun, but when, they're tra when it's tracking clouds, these are pretty darn close. So is it worth the extra money to buy the Victron? Um, that's up to you. I really like the Victron app. Okay, I know we've talked a lot about price here, but I'll tell you the secret to saving money on solar charge controllers. And the secret is not the charge controller, but rather the battery that you have. These charge controllers can connect to a 12 volt battery or a 48 volt battery. Now, because these can only charge with 30 amps, depending on which model you buy, these models can only charge with 30 amps. The battery is charged at like 14, around 14 and a half volts, I think it is. But times that by 30, you can only harness the power of about 400 watts using this model of charge controller. So instead of using a 12 volt battery to collect 400 watts of power of solar, if you use a 24 volt battery, you can collect 800 watts of solar. Hope that makes sense. So you can either buy these batter these this type of battery in a 12 volt or a 24 volt model. Or if you have two 12 volts, you can hook the hook them both together in series, and then you have a 24 volt battery, and you can charge that with this. But if you really want to save money, you can uh, go up to 48 volts. Now these won't, you'll have to buy a different charge controller, but in my RV here, I've got a 48 volt battery, and I'm saving even more money by getting this battery. And even though I have 12 volt appliances, so this steps it down from 48 volts down to 12 volts, so I can still run my 12 volt appliances in my RV. So and those, and those step down converters are pretty darn cheap. They're like 30 bucks. But anyways, hope that helped you guys. If this helped you, go ahead and like and subscribe. It'll help the channel out a lot. I know you guys have really good ideas on different tests to run. Let me know in the comments and uh, maybe I'll run some of those tests. If I run any more tests with my solar charge controller setup I have out there, I'll put it in the description. But thanks a lot. Catch you next time.